expectations. Next, we're going to hear from here, there, and everywhere, the Winchester School District of New Hampshire, Barbara Ebel and Jean Kennedy will make the presentation. Well, Good look afternoon. At that. We're offering this rose as a metaphor for the one-third of the nation's children who come to school already destined for failure. And at Thayer High School, we're trying to do something about that. Thayer has become a national model for the school change movement. Thayer is a very small school in rural New Hampshire. It is located in one of the poorest towns in a state that is 50th in aid to education. And I mention that fact because if we can make lasting school change at Thayer and have a national impact on the dialogue about education and do it without tax dollars added to our town, then, well, frankly, I think anybody can do it. And that's what we'd like to take our time to briefly talk to you about, the change and reform that Thayer is about. Uh, we have been, done many accomplishments at Thayer. There was a movie seen by 20 million Americans. There's a best-selling book. We were the school of the year, the principal of the year of last year, runner-up for the principal of the year, TV appearances, magazines, newspapers. We're proud of that, but the point of all that is that's part of the ongoing innovations that we uh, in this small school are about. There are many ongoing things to briefly uh, bullet to you this afternoon. The first, Here, There, and Everywhere, the title of our presentation comes from our centerpiece, which is our monthly uh, television show that Barbara's going to talk about. We have a second monthly show called Math Watch for people who are interested in learning or teaching math. Uh, we do a lot of consulting around the United States as teachers. We started a teacher training institute. We have hundreds of visitors who come through Thayer every year. We teachers have written a series of 10 articles that we mail to anybody who wants them, and we have a class of students uh, involved in making changes, and these students have put together a national database of students around the United States who are very interested in changing their high schools. Most important to our program is our Here, There, and Everywhere TV show. Once a month, teachers, students, and community members work together to both develop and produce this show that goes out to a live audience. It's a two-hour live interactive workshop on school reform. But not only do we answer hard questions and grapple with the things that are important in schools and how we can change them, we also teach teachers how to collaborate and have fun. For example, in one of our shows, participants had to guess how many polka dots my dress has. <laughs> this show is free. We send out materials before the show. We also follow up with support after our shows. Guests come to us from all over the country. In fact, Debbie Meyer, one of the Innovations Award winners last year, was a guest on our show this year on school climate. We also engage in an ongoing dialogue via email with other teachers that have participated in our workshops and are on our network. We are in 700 schools all over the country in 42 states. Universities also use our program for training. And this, again, is at no cost to our town in Winchester. One of the questions we thought about is what makes us special and unique. And I think we found out it's because we're actual practitioners. We get in the trenches every day, and we face the kids every day, and we share what works. And we also share in our TV shows things we've tried which perhaps haven't been so successful. And that makes us get better. We're all about teachers getting better. And this is also on site, and that makes it totally unique. This doesn't happen in a university classroom. We write articles that we send out to support our workshops and, and the programs that we have in school on team teaching, scheduling, looking at school in a very different way. We also have a training institute with a local college and a partnership. Students live in our community in a house with a coordinator. They take their methods courses with us, they spend time in school, and they also do community service with parents and their children. We do a lot of consulting, as I said, around the country, hands-on, very practical, relevant material uh, for other teachers. What we're really about is trying to empower other schools and other faculties to do what we think we have done. We have a decision-making process that involves everyone. We reach out to teachers around the United States, students, and parents and community. What we're trying to replicate is not a product, it is a process. It is not a cookbook approach, because every school looks different and every school has different problems. It's really a mindset, the old Nike adage, just, just get out there and do it. And that's what we share with our colleagues around the country, that whatever your issues are, get over the feeling of powerlessness, put your best thinking together, and, and get on with it. We'd like to close by uh, using a quote, one of our favorite quotes. 
Kids don't care what you know until they know what, that you care. And we at Thayer care, and we're trying to help other teachers feel that way too. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with, the, with a question from Ellen. Um, I think in your application you said that you had engaged Herbert Cole to, uh, to do a critique and I wonder, of your program, and I wondered what you had learned. We, a part of our program every month is interactive, and he was a guest one program as Debbie Meyer was a guest from the other. And we had a very lively uh, debate, dialogue. When, when Barbara said it's interactive, that means we have three phone lines that come in in the afternoon. A cable company hooks us all up, and we can actually talk to teachers all around the country. And that's the first time this has happened. So it's not only us dialoguing with Herb Cole or Debbie Meyer, it's anybody in any, any state in the union. And then we keep that dialogue going via email. Max? Can every school be a Thayer? I think every school can be a Thayer if we defined Thayer by teachers taking um, initiative and responsibilities. Every teacher everywhere cares, but there is a feeling of powerlessness out there. So can, everybody can address their problems. I believe we all that. have our own newsletters and our own television shows merchandising to the same markets. We don't need to replicate that. What, what I think we're about is this is the first time there's been a real national dialogue of teachers by the thousands talking to each other, providing a forum. We don't need to replicate the forum. We need to all get into the conversation together. Although teachers have replicated some parts of our program, a lot of schools are now starting to use community access to do training for schools in their areas and also to educate the parents. Parents are getting to look at classrooms. Instead of people telling them how school can be, they're getting to see practice, and it's an evaluative tool. Also, teachers use videotaping now to critique each other and be critical friends. They're starting to get more comfortable opening up their doors and letting us support each other and talk to each other. One thing we can replicate, we reached out to the business community because we don't have the resources. We are a very, very poor school. My budget's $300 next year for all the 11th and 12th graders. So we reached out to IBM and Panasonic and the Melville Corporation, and other schools can do that too. The business community wants to help. They want literate workers. Tell us about the results in your own, in your own school with your own students, and how do, how do you measure those results? Accountability is very important, and that's usually the first question someone would ask. We have, first of all, the hard statistics. We used to have a 20 to 22 percent dropout rate of our students. Now we have a 3 percent dropout rate. We used to only have 10 percent of our students go on to higher education, and now we have over 50 percent. We'll never have the scores of a Palo Alto, for instance. That's not the clients we serve, but our kids have choices. We also have feedback from the community and from the parents. The parents are part of our curriculum planning. They're part of our out reach and I think we get a lot of feedback from our graduates when they go on to college usually first time uh, first time in their family anyone has done that and Tim Antonio first and then Harriet um, I'm part of the learn process in LA and we have our own unique challenges but let me ask you what role does the union play or the unions play in this whole reform That's not a major issue for us at this point, but we, ought, we realize that the unions have to be involved in the ongoing dialogue also. We've been very weak in that, and they've been very separate from a lot of schools that have, have especially faculties that have become empowered when it comes down to issues like time that we give beyond the work day or work to rule and sticking with it and things like that. So we realize that we have to really become more uh, advocates for education first and for our children um, and, and work to affect change within the, the, the ways that the unions operate. Uh, we've discussed the, the video aspects and how transferable they might or might not be. If you were to list the three top elements that you could see other schools or systems replicating, in other words, what is it that you would say could create the model? It's not the national television, obviously. The the first thing that I think I would mention, and then I'll see what Barbara has to say, I think you have to have that climate of respect. And we did a whole television show on school climate that a lot of schools around the country, we use their tapes, by the way. We don't just use our own. Here, there, and everywhere is an open national dialogue. And uh, we only use half of the material from there. So I think the first thing I would talk about is that, that climate. You have to have that sense of mutual trust and an urgency that we're all in this for the kids, and that can certainly be everywhere. I, I think I was trying to get at, uh, in terms of programmatic, in other words, if this is a model, and you were saying here are the 
some things you do to achieve that. What's the transfer of, I, I know the spirit and excitement is there. Do you want to talk about that? No, no okay. I'll t I'll, uh, there are specific uh, materials. What, what we mail out with our monthly TV show, we have specific suggestions. For example, um, how to get together if you have a community that doesn't support. We've had a lot of guidelines on that. How to um, motiv uh, mobilize the students to come together to form that. Uh, just a, a, just ways to change the school day, to, to change the way we look at school. We can't expect students to come in anymore and be entertained by us. They don't want that anymore. They need to be engaged. They need to buy into it. And we're helping teachers to see that that's a whole different model than we've all been used to in traditional education. Such things as block, just to add one small thing, there are very specific things. Our nine shows follow nine themes. For instance, teaming, integrated curriculum, student as worker, playing around with the scheduling, making this whole school experience look different. So there are many, many specifics. I'm afraid there